Hi friends, it's Terry Stewart, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. Welcome to this month's vlog where we share techniques. So I'm an Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Central Maryland. So welcome to the vlog. I think you're gonna like the projects and I'm really excited to share mine. So let's get started. So here's my project and the technique I'm sharing today is embossed re resist. So I've embossed and then um, sponged over that area with ink and where the embossing is, it resists the ink. So that's why it's called embossed resist. And I have used the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. I'm using this image here that has, um, I think it was a speckles, it coordinates with this image and it's distinctive where this has two layers of color. This only has one layer of color. And uh, the other images from the stamp set that I've used is this branch, the shadow underneath of the tree and uh, thinking of you sentiment. So this is a great stamp set, very versatile. So I've been doing uh, thank you cards with it, friendship cards with it. Um, it makes great fall cards or summary cards, depending on what colors you, you use on your leaves. So um, very versatile. And with that, I'm using the Stitch So Sweetly dies. I'm using the large rectangle from these die sets. It's one of my favorites. And then you also have these labels so you can uh, layer uh, and with these also with these rectangles. So it's a, it's a really fun um, die set. So let's get started with some um, cutting. Here is my cutter, paper trimmer. I'm going to score my paper along the short side at the halfway mark. And score, and I'm gonna rotate my paper and cut it in half on the long side. And so for us in Imperial, I've uh, scored at four and a quarter and I'm rotating it to cut at five and a half. For our metric friends, you would score at 10 and a half and cut at 14.9. Here I've cut for Imperial at five and a half. This is our card base. And then for our very vanilla, I'm going to cut it on four inches. Actually, I'm gonna cut it at five and a quarter on the long side. And that would be 14.4 for our metric. And I'm going to cut it then at four inches. And that is 10 inches uh, for our metric. And then I'm gonna save this piece uh, for some die cutting. All the measurements, you can check out my blog at stampinghairblogspot.com for all the measurements for this project, or in the description below, there'll be a link to that blog and to the other participants in this vlog hop. So let's cut out, oh, one more thing we have to cut out. Bring my cutter back in, the paper trimmer, is the next piece of base. I've used the In Good Taste DSP. I love this paper stack. It has so many textures. There's wood elements, tile elements, um, like tweed, and um, I guess it's almost like a sweater element, more tile, tweed, wood. It, all in various colors. There's um, blushing bry, gray granite, early espresso. Just uh, here's some more tile. I just really love this. I can't say enough about this paper. So I'm going to use this tweed element and I'm going to cut it at four inches. And because this is 12 by 12, a four inch cut uh, is an economical cut. So I'm going to cut this at four and the metric that would be 10 centimeters. And then I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter. And our metric, that would be 14.4. Uh, 
and this becomes my card front on the base. And that is all the cutting uh, for this project. I am using the largest uh, Stitch So Sweetly rectangle, and I will be cutting this out on, on the piece that remained from our uh, Berry Vanilla cut. I'm going to take my die and line it up near the corner of my cardstock just to be more efficient, putting it slightly at an angle because it will cut better in my die cut and emboss machine, and then process it through. And here is our die cut that will become the focal piece on our card front. So here's our die cut and now we can start our technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp this branch with my soft suede ink. And I'm going to stamp it a little in the center. So I'll find the center of my um, piece. And then using my guideline on my grid and the grid on the top, I'm gonna to stamp it. So it has um, maybe just a little bit in the bottom room for the shadow stamp. So here we are with our soft suede ink and then using my gray granite ink pad and the shadow stamp from the Beauty of Friendship. I'm going to stamp this just below the stem, a trunk of the tree, so somewhat of a shadow. Now for our technique, I'll be using Versamark and clear um, embossing powder. And this is a old container, so it has old uh, packaging, uh, but it is clear um, embossing powder from Stampin' Up. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of scrap paper. And here is my um, tree with the dapples in it. So it is not the distinctive part of the of the stamp. I'm going to ink this up really well with Versamark. And then I'm going to stamp over top of my branches. And I'm trying to uh, center the branches within this stamp So there I have my Versamark. And I know you won't be able to see it because it is a clear ink. Uh, you really can't see it. But once I put my embossing powder on top of it, it will adhere to where that Versamark ink is. And the Versamark, um, the Versamark ink is a thick ink. It's a pigment type of pigment ink. So it doesn't uh, evaporate quickly. So you have a few moments to work with it. So I think you can see the powder where the Versamark is. And now I put the clear embossing powder on top of that. And working with my scrap paper, I can put the excess back into the container. It goes a very long way. And now I'll be using a clothespin to hold my image while I bring in my heat tool. I'm going to heat it until the powder melts and becomes shiny. And that's when I know that um, the embossing is complete. So I'm going to hold it fairly close to your image. And then, uh, so you can see when the powder melts and becomes shiny. And then I'll move on to the next area. And I'll keep moving my heat gun over the powder until I, it all melts and I see that it's shiny. And you just want to do it till it's shiny. You don't want to overheat it because it will burn and flake off. And 
And I'm using this clothespin because that heat gun, although it looks like a hairdryer, it gets amazingly hot. Well, it would blister your fingers. So there you can see the shininess from the clear embossing powder. Bring back my stamp. Uh, my scrap paper and now I'm going to bring in a sponge dauber and my old olive ink and this is where the resist part so we've done the embossing and now we're doing the resist and I'm going to put some ink on my dauber and then make circular motions over top of the embossed area and you will see that the the embossing resists the ink. And I'm gonna keep this in kind of a, a triangle pattern as a tree would be that grows fuller at the bottom and then narrows when you get to the top. And so I'm just making circular motions and the more ink you put on, the darker it will be behind the, the resisting pattern. So I'm just making these swirly motions and I want to make sure that I get all my emboss go over all the emboss with the ink. Once I have as dark as I would like bring in a paper towel and rub on top of it because the ink sitting on top of the emboss portions won't get absorbed so you will need to Rub that off and then you'll get even more of the emboss. You really see it come through. So you've embossed with clear on top of berry vanilla and the berry vanilla is protected underneath as is the soft suede tree trunk branches. And there you have your embossed resist. Because this is a photopolymer stamp and you can see through it and I've used Versamark on it I want to be sure that I use my stamp and mist and my stamp and scrub to clean that to remove the Versamark so that won't be removed if you just use your um, your chamois you do need to have some soapy um, cleaner to remove the Versamark from your stamp so next I'm going to work on this sentiment, this thinking of you sentiment. And I think you'll be able to see that it's embossed. Now I used the clear embossing for that, but what I did is a little trick where first you take your Versamark and you ink your sentiment. So this is my thinking of you. Ink it with Versamark. Then get your water-based ink that normally wouldn't hold because it would evaporate too quickly. Hold the embossing powder. And I'm gonna stamp right here in the corner of my scrap paper. So this is ink mixed with Versamark. And I can put some of my clear embossing powder on top of that. And the powder, because of the Versamark, will now stick to that sentiment. So there you see the, see the powder sticking to that. And I can, as I did previously, put the excess back into the container. Bring in my clothespin again and my heat gun. And I'll heat this until the embossing powder melts. And then the color of the ink, the soft suede ink comes through. Now you can see, I think you can see how, how the clear embossing powder looks on top of that ink. I'm going to uh, use my snips and snip this sentiment out. 
And then once again, because I had burst mark on my photopolymer, I'm going to clean that out, clean it up with some stamping mist to remove the bursa mark. Well, on the inside of my cart, I've done a, a little bit of decoration. This time with just ink, so I'll be using my very vanilla piece. So with my soft suede, I'm gonna ink up my tree trunk and stamp about halfway on the left-hand bottom. Then using my old olive and my sponge dauber, a little bit of ink and just lightly color this tree with some, give it some green. Now we're ready to assemble our card. I'm taking my card base and using my bone folder to, to enforce that score line. I'm gonna put a piece of DSP from In Good Taste. And you can see the back of this looks fabulous too. That um, paper stack has so many awesome patterns in it. I think it's very versatile uh, because of the patterns and textures. And this will leave a small border all around my card base. For the back of my focal piece, I'm using dimensionals fold it to the card front. And I like to use all the pieces, even the ends of my dimensional packs. So I will tear off the pieces from the edge and use them. Remove all these backings. And I'm going to eyeball it and try to get equal distance on the uh, right and left, and a little bit higher. So I am going to put my sentiment at the bottom. I want to leave room for that. And then this sentiment is glued directly to the, to the card front towards the bottom. Then do my inside piece. And I have on purpose not uh, used any words on this so I can personalize uh, a greeting when I sent it or send a personalized note. And then the last uh, element, I'm gonna bring in some champagne rhinestones. These are my favorite. I love the color of these. And I'm going to take my pick your tool, take your pick tool, take in a small rhinestone and I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to take a lar the largest rhinestone and add it up here and then the medium sized Rhinestone, place that right here. And there's my finished card with the uh, embossed resist technique. Check out the description below and hop to the next participant in this vlog for even more fun projects featuring various techniques. Thank you again for joining me. And remember, to like and subscribe to this channel so I can bring you even more fun projects. And until then, remember, stamping is fun. Bye.